Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson Tonight. Tonight, we'll talk to the mayor of a city on the verge of bankruptcy who insists on maintaining sanctuary city status. We'll also talk to the leader of a transgender rights group who is furious about President Trump's recent action on bathrooms. But first up, it is undoubtedly a new age of nationalism. Politicians who reject rootless globalism are thriving all over the globe, and nowhere was that more obvious than at CPAC these last three days. Watch. Global cooperation, dealing with other countries, getting along with other countries is good. It's very important. But there is no such thing as a global anthem, a global currency, or a global flag. This is the United States of America that I'm representing. I'm not representing the globe. I'm representing your country. It's not only not going to get better, it's going to get worse every day in the media. <laughs> and here's why. But by the way, the internal logic makes sense. They're corporatist, globalist media that are adamantly opposed, adamantly opposed to an economic nationalist agenda like Donald Trump has. I always believed that we should govern our own country. I always believe we should be free to reach out and make our own deals with our real friends in the world. And it's funny, our real friends in the world speak English, have common law, and stand by us in times of crisis. Well, you may recognize that man. That was Nigel Farage, who knows quite a bit about running a successful nationalist movement. He once headed the UK Independence Party and was a top backer of the 2016 Brexit referendum that demanded Britain's withdrawal from the European Union. Nigel Farage joins us now. Nigel, thanks for coming on. So, Thank you. I think it's fair to say it's official. Nationalism is now global. It's obvious there's no denying it with the president's speech. Why? Well, you say nationalism. I actually call it nationism. Okay. We believe in the nation state. It's a, that is the unit we identify with. That is what we feel part of. That is what we cheer for in the Olympics. And if necessary, that is what we're prepared to fight for. It embodies our values, our families, our communities, our heritage, our identity, maybe even our tribe. And I think what happened in 2016 with Brexit and with Trump, and I believe is going to roll out through 2017 is a return to normality. What the globalists tried to do was to destroy the nation state. And what those two big events of 16 did was to re-establish the democratic nation state. And that is right and proper and normal. So the nation state is such an obvious arrangement. It was organic. People created them because they wanted them. I guess the obvious question is why did so many people in power spend so much time trying to obliterate them? What was their motive? Well, well, one of the motives was that France and Germany, every 25 years, kept fighting each other. Exactly. So they kind of wondered, they kind of wondered, how do we stop the Germans from crossing the Rhine and trying to smash the French? And they thought if they merged the two countries, that might be a way to do it. But just as with communism, the big idea that came before this, the road to hell can be paved with good intentions. The mistake they made was this provided nation states are democratic, they will not fight and they will not go to war with each other. And if you try and give people a false identity, a false flag, a false god, if you like, then they will rebel and turn against it. And I think that what the European Union was, was kind of a prototype for a bigger form of global government. And had Hillary Clinton won, you would have become part of it. So thank goodness that Trump has stopped the rot. Right. And there would have been an even bigger reaction against it, I predict, um, in four years. So I think American nationalism is a good thing, a benign thing. I think the same of British nationalism. I think most people would agree deep yeah. down. Should we be as excited about the prospect of, I don't know, German nationalism or Japanese nationalism? Are all nationalisms created equal and should we like them all? Well, that depends. Um, if those nationalist movements uh, get to a position where they're able to obliterate the democratic process, then we have a problem. But all the while we have genuine democratic government, then what we should do is to trust the people. The people in all these countries are not stupid and they will not allow real extremists into power. And, and the, the one thing that I find, Tucker, just so offensive 
is for people like me and Trump who've been pushing this idea of the nation state, you know, you make your own laws, you control your own borders, and, you, and, and you know, you reach out to your friends. We've been called extremists, we've been called fascists, we've been called all the names under the sun, and actually, the real fascists are those that shout us down and say that our view isn't valid. So you heard a, a species of that from Steve Bannon at CPAC yesterday who said this is going to be really hard to affect what we want to do because the globalists will be against us. Do you agree with him that the opposition to Trump is rooted in this attachment to globalism, a global government? Well, what the globalists did, uh, the supranationalists did, is they managed to get big business and the big banks on their side. Right. Uh, they created a marketplace where the big guys could carve everything up at the expense of the small. So, you know, we've got to recognise that there are some very big vested interests that do not want Brexit to be a success and don't want Trump to be a success. You know, this is not going to be a cakewalk. This is not going to be easy. And I think that's what Steve Bannon was alluding to yesterday. But I'll tell you what the good news is. The good news is that since Brexit, there's now a far bigger majority of the British people that support us getting back control of our lives. Right. And, the same thing is, and the same thing is happening here in America. Since November the 8th, what you've seen is a man who was elected on a ticket and he intends to put it into action. That is what democracy is supposed to be. I think Trump is bringing back confidence and faith in the democratic process. And I bet you his popularity ratings are going to soar from here. So last question, do you think the people around him buy in? I mean, you see people like Steve Mnuchin, other Goldman people. Did they, I mean, have they changed their views completely? Are they on board with this? Well, the fact that somebody worked at Goldman doesn't necessarily make them a bad person. No, of course uh, it not. Probably means they're, it probably means they're very knowledgeable and very bright and they understand financial markets. Look, I, you know, I, I look... Um, at that team around Trump. I look at Bannon, I look at Kellyanne Conway. I think we've got some very smart people now in charge of the USA. And uh, yeah, I've got every confidence that Donald Trump's team are going to bring jobs back to America. Yeah. They're going to control illegal immigration. And I think a couple of years into this administration, uh, this could be one of the most popular presidents of modern times. Nigel Farage, on an optimistic note, thanks all for coming on. Thank you.